distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I have my remarks, the theme of my remarks will be powering the third industrial revolution. Um, the reality is that in the next two decades, almost three billion more people will move into the middle class. As a result, they will want better housing, more televisions, more cars, more food, more of everything. Um, whether it's India or in Africa, they know industrialization brings prosperity, it brings jobs. They also know that those who are more industrialized have had a consumption pattern that they've been admiring. They want the same. Mm -hmm. We can't deny them that. Correct. So the challenge of the third industrial revolution, one challenge, is how do we power it? How do we provide energy for this third industrial revolution? It is also how do we ensure sustainable consumption and sustainable production, some of the issues that Akim has raised. The Secretary General puts it this way, that our challenge is how to grow economies and spread prosperity while keeping the Earth's thermostat below two degrees temperature. Jeremy Rifkin, the president of the Foundation on Economic Trends and professor at Wharton School of Business, has demonstrated that the third industrial revolution can be driven by distributive, decentralized power systems. In his views, he says the current third industrial revolution is an opportunity to combine innovations in distributive energy and the digital revolution. The integration of massive investments in decentralized renewable energy combined with information and communications technologies will create the energy internet. And that impulse will lead to millions of jobs in both rich and poor countries and perhaps help us the, uh, end energy poverty. It is within this context that the Secretary General and the President of the World Bank decided to launch the Sustainable Energy for All initiative to create the kind of partnerships Akim Schreiner talked about, mega partnerships, public and private sector, to mobilize resources, technology, and investments to go into the energy space. Under this initiative, we set three targets to achieve universal access to energy by 2030, a lot has been said about energy poverty in India and elsewhere this morning. Second, to double the annual rate of improvement of energy efficiency. Can we drive innovations and investments into energy efficiencies, energy efficiency so we in fact lower emissions? In other words, the rich guys also changing how they produce and use energy. And we believe renewables and this idea of the energy internet is possible to be able to create that opportunity for different ways of producing energy in rich, but also in poor countries. The third target is to double the share of renewables in the global energy mix. We believe these three are possible. The technologies are known, but the public policies need to be in place to incentivize investments. In fact, the challenges, uh, the, the calculations we've done by the World Bank, the International Energy Agency, and others to achieve these three targets globally will need investments in the order of six to $800 billion uh, annually. In fact, we see it as an investment opportunity, not as a cost. That this creates that kind of business opportunity around the world, but also the opportunities for innovation. Now, how do we do that? How do we mobilize those resources and put these partnerships together? My proposal is three coalitions. Within our mega partnership of sustainable energy for all, we can create three coalitions. The first coalition, I call it the coalition to reduce the cost of renewables. We believe this is doable, a group of countries getting together to drive down the cost of solar. We believe this can be done within a decade. We can drive down the cost of solar so that it has universal grid parity, that it is cheap enough or cheap as or cheaper than fossil fuel technologies. But to do that, you need more investments in R&D. Mm -hmm. So the idea is you get G8 countries combining with key research institutions to drive down the cost of solar. Second coalition is the coalition for energy efficiency. We know that 23 countries, which constitute what we call the clean energy ministerial, 23 countries account for 80% of energy demand, 80% of the emissions. But they are also the same countries that account for 90% of the investments in green energy. Can we get these 23 countries to agree amongst themselves? I'm not talking about 193 countries now. 23 of the highest polluters to agree on some of the energy efficiency initiatives. Efficient lighting, some of what was discussed in the earlier panel about reducing uh, uh, emissions from mm -hmm. transport systems, better mass transit, 
new urban planning, building codes, and so on. So again, coalition of 23 that can catalyze innovation for the rest of the world. The last one is, of course, a coalition of countries that are already investing heavily in renewables in developing countries. In 2012, total investments in renewable energy was about $245, $250 billion. But over 50% of that was from developing countries. Mm -hmm. China, India, Brazil, and some others, South Africa, invested heavily. I call this the coalition of the progressives. They can leapfrog into clean energy, into the energy internet. How do we get the power of those countries, the BRICS and some others, combined with Germany, Norway and others who are believers in green energy to help other countries, in fact, leapfrog into the energy internet. It is not impossible. In 2000, we had about four, four million mobile connections in Africa. Mm -hmm. In 2012, 720 mobile connections. It is possible for developing countries to leapfrog into the energy internet, but it requires new <coughs> global partnerships, new creative coalitions, and we hope that under the new initiative of the Secretary General and the President of the World Bank of Sustainable Energy for All, we can drive those coalitions. We were disappointed that we didn't finish the Doha round of negotiations. Mm -hmm. We are very disappointed we couldn't finish climate change negotiations to get the grand deal, but maybe we should think now in the new development paradigm of creative coalitions of governments and companies that can drive innovation and change based on business models that are profitable.